Hello everyone and welcome to another scrapbook layout process video. You can see from what I've got in front of me, I've got the Dream Maker coordinated card stock that I'm going to play with today. I'm not bringing in the pattern paper for this one, I'm just going to use the coordinated card stock. There's a layout that I've been wanting to try that I saw a couple of years ago and it's popular again I think at the moment because it's popping up on my Instagram feed quite a little bit. I would love to credit the original designer of this but I'm not quite sure who did it there's a lot of people doing variations of this type of layout now but I do want to show you a, a little tip on how to get everything lined up for this I'm using the Lagoon Glacier and Sundance patterns for this one the other side of the cardstock just in case you haven't seen my other videos or seen the promotions with close to my heart that are on at the moment because this is national scrapbooking month and it's a special paper for this month but it's also available to the end of june as well while stocks last but the other side of the paper is just the plain cardstock color but I just love this side. So I'm using this colorway for this layout, but it would also work if you wanted a softer, more pink purple tone. But I decided I wanted to do a nice bright bold one that's going to suit some beach photos. I'm gonna move this aside and bring in the pieces of cardstock that I've already trimmed. These are all trimmed at one inch by 12 inch pieces and I have two of each. And I'm going to build this up so that it points in towards the left hand side of my page. So I'm gonna build the left page and then I'm going to do some layered stamping because I'm all about that at the moment. I can't get enough of it. And I'm going to show you a trick on how to get everything lined up so that it makes it a little bit easier. It's what I've determined works for the size of layout and the photos that I'm going to use. I don't know if you've noticed but normally when I'm scrapbooking and crafting my setup is to have two of the Versa mats side by side so that I can put two 12 by 12s next to each other easily and I always put the zeros up in the top left corner because then I can do the X and the Y axis rather than having it turned around the other way. I seem to work from this point down when I'm doing my measurements and everything so that I can get everything lined up. And that also helps when I'm writing instructions as well. The other thing that I always have on my desk is my all-purpose mat so that if I'm adhering fine pieces and I want to use my dot roller or some glue, I can do this on the mat and nothing sticky sticks to this it will just wipe right off it's also good for blending and for splattering on you can see I use this quite a bit even though it gets marked it still does what it's meant for and it really is one of my most favorite tools so I think if I was recommending anybody that was starting up scrapbooking and wanted some basic tools, the Versamat would be one of the first things I would get and the all-purpose mat. The Versamat is great because of all these grid lines, but also when you flip it over, there's a spongy side on this side, so it's a good stamping surface as well. So it really does double duty, and it is a self-healing mat, so you can use a scalpel knife or a craft knife on this and not do any damage and the way I clean this up is using a rub and remove eraser because that will get rid of all the adhesive or little sticky parts that might get on here it does clean that up quite well if you rub that into your mat and you can clean it off that way so let's get into building this page so what I've decided to do I'm going to roughly lay this out so you've got an idea of where I'm going with this I'm going to have the lagoon on the outside and then I think I'm going to try I'm not sure which one I'm going to put on the inside whether I go the glacier and then on to the Sundance so you can see I'm effectively making like an arrow element pointing into my page but I think what I want to do is swap this around a little bit and have my glacier on the outside because I've already got some photo mats and I've decided to use Lagoon photo mats. So this might work a little bit better. I'm just doing a rough little placement of all of these. 
and this helps me get my head around what I'm going to adhere first and if it's all going to work with the plan that I have. So I think this works really, really well and there's going to be some leftover pieces to bring over to the right-hand page. So I'm essentially working on the left-hand page first. The first one I'm going to adhere is the middle one and that's going to be the Sundance paper. And I want to make sure that I get the textured part, the ones that have the most detail on them, on this area here rather than the pieces that I'm going to trim away. Now there's a little trick with doing this to make it easy to adhere it all and get this in the center. Basically what I need is a piece of 12 by 12 inch paper and I'm going to line this up at two inches here and two inches from the bottom and then I'm going to go across at six inches with my T ruler and make sure that I get this point in the middle. I think I'm going to start with the two inches and then I'm going to work out if I need to bring that up anymore. So as long as I hold that steady there, I can get that at two inches and two inches from each edge. And then I can push my piece of paper out like this and take that away and do another quick dry fit because I want the edges of these to line up like this. Then I'm going to get my glacier and rather than having this wash, I want this bit with a bit of splatters on there. And I think this is going to work. So I'm building out from the Sundance with the glacier and then I'll build in from the Sundance with the Lagoon. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I do want this central point here to be on the six inch mark. And as long as I've got my first one lined up, I know that my next one is going to follow on. So I'm going to take these pieces away. I'm going to put tape runner. I'm going to leave this piece here and try not to move it. And I'm just going to put some tape runner onto these edges. Actually, what you could do is put it directly onto the page itself. That might make it a little bit easier to adhere. So I've got my bottom one here that's extending this white and it tells me exactly where I'm going to line this one up with this edge and then push that up against the white. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the other piece of Sundance. It's hard to remember to put the adhesive directly on the page. I'm so used to putting the adhesive directly onto the piece I'm going to adhere down. So there's really no fancy tools to get this to line up. I do have a T ruler, but you could do this with a normal ruler. I just love having a T ruler in my craft room. It just makes everything so much easier when I want to get things a little bit straighter. So I don't need that piece of white anymore. And then I'm gonna come in and do my glacier piece. So once again, I'm going to line it up. And this time I'm gonna start from the bottom because I want this edge here, this point here to line up with this Sundance one. And I'm going to go along with my tape runner and I think it's about to run out. And that would be right to have that happen while I'm filming. So I'll push that one up there so it's lined up. And then I can do the same thing on this side. And now I know where to finish my tape runner. And that lines up on that side. And then we can fill in this bottom section. So I'm, once again, I'm going to look at the pattern and pick the piece that has the most texture to be showing on this left page. But this one up here. Now this system works for any width of paper. I just chose to have mine as one inch pieces. 
you can vary the width of this and I've also got another sample to show you in a totally different pattern paper. So now that I've done this I can turn my page over and I'm just going to use scissors rather than a trimmer because I feel like I can hold this a little bit easier than putting it in to my trimmer with the overhanging pieces. And I'm going to trim away these sections. And another reason why I'm using my scissors to do this is because if I used my trimmer, I could go right across here and I would cut these two pieces up into smaller pieces. And I want to keep them as long as possible so that I can use them on the right page. So there's my piece of pattern paper and the design. I love the look of this layout. I'm really, really happy with that. Now I'm going to work on the right page and I've got these pieces here to decorate this side. Now I'm going fairly minimal on this side because this is quite a strong design feature. If you wanted to do this as a title page or the first page in an album or the back page in an album, it would make a really cool opening page and this design lends itself to a single page spread really, really well. But I've decided I wanna make this into a double page spread and do my own little twist on how I'm gonna set up the right side. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to try and replicate this design because it's not going to be exactly the same. You could do a smaller version, but I don't think that would work as well. And I would have to start with the square pieces. So I can lay that out so you can have a little look at what that might look at like if you did this on this side. So I could just easily push my leftover pieces here and trim that off. There's nothing wrong with that. I do want to leave an open area here just for a little bit of white space. But I think I might do a little angle on the bottom here and see what that looks like. So I'm going to get, I've already got an angle cut here from cutting away off the edge of this paper. And then I can line up my next angle and this is all going to be determined by my smallest piece. So I want to cover this whole entire area. And I really like how this is looking on the right page. I think this will just lead the eye into all of the photo placements and then this anchors the right page. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere my smallest piece of glacier so that it covers this little white corner here. So once again, I can just put my tape runner direct to page and I'm going to conserve as much of this paper as I want. You can use this design to use up the last little bit of scraps that you've got left over and then they just don't go to waste and then once again I can turn this over and trim off the excess and then I might see if I've got enough to repeat that pattern on that side if I like the look of that and I could definitely do a matching piece on this side so that it is a mirror image from the top to the bottom. But I don't quite want it that matchy matchy. I think what I'm going to do is actually make some little banners out of this and dovetail them. I prefer this as a design rather than having a totally matching corner to this side. So I'm loving how this looks. I'm really glad I didn't do the matching triangle corner to this page. What I'm thinking now is that I'm going to just have a little play with these photo holders that I've got here. I'm thinking I'm going to do, I do love doing a bit of a grid layout on the other side. And by doing something like this, it's giving me a little area that I can tuck a journaling box in or some embellishments in, rather than having everything all the same all the way across by staggering the photos, or not staggering the photos, but by having the orientation of the photos different with portrait and landscape. And I don't really want to cover up too much of this because I want that to be a bit of a feature on the page. 
if I put a photo holder over the top of that, it would just take away from the little design element that we've got with this layered section here meeting up. It's almost like laying tiles. I'm going to take the photo placements away. I'm going to be using the Dream Maker stamp set. So I'm going to put some of these images onto a block ready to go and then I'll be back to do some stamping. For the next part of this layout, I'm going to bring in the Dream Maker stencil. I'm only going to be using the dots for this and I've had a little bit of a play and a test and I'm going to use the Sundance and the Lagoon ink but I do need to be careful that I don't push them together because they will make green and I don't want green on this layout so I have to be a little bit careful about what I'm going to do with my stenciling. I've just used some Lagoon ink on this stencil now so I'm going to start with the Lagoon and then I have to clean it off before I use it again and I'm going to brush off my my ink my blending brush first before I put it on there and I'm using a fairly light hand and I'm making sure that I don't go in a square direction and I want some coming off the edge of the page just to give it a little bit more of an organic feel and then I'm going to go in with some of those dots over in this area as well so that it goes on to that pattern paper here well, it's actually not called pattern paper. It's called coordinating cardstock. But for me, this has the most gorgeous pattern on it. So I keep referring to it as a pattern paper in its own right. So I'm just wiping off a bit of that ink, going in and just putting a few of these around. I'm not going over the Sundance paper either. I know my photo is going to go along here. So I want some of this to come out from behind the photo. So I'm going to put some more of these little circles on, wipe off my brush. And you can see while I'm doing this, I'm not going in an up and down motion. I'm trying to spread this out as much as possible, even though the circles are in a grid type layout. But I quite like how that looks. And then I think I might do just a little bit up in this section up here. And then I'm just going to bring in a baby wipe. I can just spray this with water if I wanted to because it is a water-based dye ink, but I've been using this. The reason why I wanted to show you this this is what happens when you mix the Lagoon and the Sundance together. It takes on a real green hue. So I want to make sure that I get my stencil all nice and cleaned up before I bring in the Sundance. I'm going to hold this over some white paper just to make sure that all the blue is gone from the Lagoon so that I can safely come in with my Sundance ink. I'm not going to mask this off at all. I just want to get some of these circles onto the Sundance paper and it's okay if some of it goes onto the lagoon or the glacier. And once again, I'm going to wipe my blending brush off just a little bit. I'm not doing this over the whole entire area. I just want some of these little circle stencil pieces just to make it cohesive with the other circles that I've done throughout the backgrounds. I'm going to do some stamping now and bring in some layers and some texture to these little areas. First of all though I'm going to stamp my title. So I'm using always and then I'm going to stamp over top just like in the 6x8 album I'm going to do a layered title. So I'm going to have always chasing sunshine. And this is from the Dream Maker set and I think it's a bit perfect for this beach sort of feel with these papers. So I'm going to stamp always in Lagoon. I'm just going to bring in my scratch paper to make sure that I've got all of this perfectly pressed into my stamp block. Ink this up and I'm going to do some shadow stamping with this which is exactly the same technique that's used in the 6x8 album. So that's first generation and then just move it down slightly to the right and then second generation and you get a little bit of a shadow and that's stamped beautifully. So I know that I can go in and do this on this piece of white daisy. So I'm just going to ink this up again, 
might have to go this way because I'm going to have the chasing sunshine coming out from the edge of the always. It's not going to be totally in the middle of it. Got this all nicely inked up and stamp on. Let it sink in just a little bit. Lift it up and go down and across. It's only doing it by a millimetre, maybe nearly two millimetres. And you get a little bit of a shadow there. And then I'm going to bring in black ink and put Chasing Sunshine over the top of the two letters on the end here, the Y and the S. I'm going to clean off my blocks and then I'm going to come in with some stamping on the layouts. The first thing I'm going to stamp on are the tags and the little tabs. I'm going to bring in Sundance Ink. I've already done this on the Lagoon tag, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a match with that on this Sundance tag. And I've got this script text here. You can see that there. And I'm just going to do some random stamping over top of this tag. This is going to come out the side of the photo, so I'm just going to put it so that it runs in the same orientation. Bring in my Lagoon ink because I want to do that on this tab here. So this is tone on tone stamping when you think about it going on to the actual colour of the coordinated cardstock. And this is what I'm going to do for the layouts as well. I'm going to do the text stamping first and then I'll bring in the little extra touches. watch the other day I love these two little elements here I'll stamp them off for you so you can see one is a watercolor type circle and one is a splatter and these look really great to bring everything in together so I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the first and the second generation stamping really love how that looks. Imagine doing this with heritage style papers and doing it with tans and browns and French vanilla. All those sorts of colours would look fabulous with this type of stamping. It doesn't have to be bright and bold. You'll get a totally different look if you use vintage tones. So now I'm going to clear everything up and I'm going to put the photo holders on there and position the final elements. You can see I've gone ahead and I've adhered my photo holders. I've popped my Always Chasing Sunshine which I fussy cut out just very loosely and popped that up on 3D foam tape and then I've got my little tabs. So the one that had the stamping with the script reading across this way has tucked in here and the script reading across this way has tucked in the top here. So this is just a baking twine from the supermarket aisle for wrapping up your roasts and your meats and things. It's 100% cotton. I just buy a roll of this when I'm at the supermarket and I use it on my tags rather than wrapping up pieces of meat. And what I'm going to do for these is something that I showed on my previous video. I really liked the look of that. I'm going to trim these down so that I can extend my tags and make them look like they run the whole length behind this photo mat. I'm going to have more of the Lagoon one popping up at the top and less at the bottom. I'm going to put the Lagoon tag at the back so that I can place the Sundance one over top. Because it's going up against a Lagoon mat, I think it will look 
better if there is more of the Sundance showing. So then this one can come down. I'm overlapping it. So rather than having a white area behind the little hole there, I'm going to have the lagoon. And then I'm going to do the same thing along the bottom here. This one's going to tuck up underneath. I want a little bit of this text showing. I don't want to hide all that lovely laid stamping that I did. So I could call this done. This is a great layout to have for a beach layout or a lake layout or up on the river water skiing. But I also have these floral elements and I did this stamping on the other video I did. So I haven't actually shown you how to do this on this video. I'll put a link to that video down below. But what I could do is actually enhance this just that little bit more and tuck some of these florals. I've stamped quite a few and it's still using the Dream Maker stamp set with these watermark type stamps and also this textured line stamp, which I haven't used on this layout. And I've got some of the smaller ones, some of the larger ones. So I could group these around and then it could be a Queensland holiday, Fiji holiday, Hawaii, Florida, anything that has these tropical type flowers or they really like hibiscus. And where I live is not tropical, but I have a hibiscus that flowers every year and it's a nice bright pink one so I could put those all around photos of my hibiscus it does quite well even in colder climates but you can see how this just puts another level of decorative elements onto the pages. I'm not actually going to adhere these. I'm going to take photos with and without the floral elements. I'm just grouping them on here so you've got an idea of what this could look like if you decided to do this onto your layout if you wanted to make something like this. Florals are really good for tucking in and around each other. So some are tucked under the photo, some are over the top, and some will be trimmed off the edge of the page and then I can put my journaling all down here and I'm really happy with how this is looking on the page. There is a lot of layering with the stamped elements which gives a decorative feel to this but you can leave it at that, not add the floral elements or you could add beach umbrellas or any other decorative element that you wanted to put onto this layout. Now I did say I was going to bring in the one that I had my little test on and this is using I think it was the lovely paper from a couple of years ago. I just had some strips of this and decided that I would test this out and work out how I was going to position things so that I was a little bit more up to speed with what I was going to do on the video. The difference between these two, they're still one inch strips, but instead of just doing a small section here, I did a larger section and I filled it right into the edge of the paper. So this one has five main strips on each side and then a little filler from a cut off piece to finish it off at the end. If you wanted to you could have this coming down from the top of the page, you could have it coming up from the bottom of the page. So there really is a lot of choices with this. You could have two coming in like this if that was your style and you wanted to do it. There's a really a lot of options to do with this very easy technique of creating these strips that go into a triangle coming off the edges of your base layers. But I'm going to call this done. I think there is enough color going on through through here and then when I put the beach photos on here I can add flip flaps if I've got more of them. I can actually split this up into two three by fours if I wanted to if I ended up with more photos. So there's always that option when you're looking at a layout and you see a four by six placeholder. You can always print them off into four by threes or three by fours and put those into the area of the four by six holder. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. I always appreciate your lovely comments, your likes, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would do so. I will leave links to everything that I've used in the description below, so make sure you click on see more. And as always, happy crafting. I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.